75 years ago, the United States was in the midst of the Great Depression. Life was hard for everyone at that time, especially for folks in rural areas. While people in the cities had enjoyed electricity for over 50 years, more than 90% of farms were still in the dark. As a result, the workday began long before dawn and lasted late into the night. There were no lights, no washing machines, no dishwashers, no vacuum cleaners, no refrigerators, no running water, none of the modern conveniences that we take for granted. Today, it's hard to imagine what life would be like without electricity, but you are about to meet some Farmers Electric Cooperative members who lived during those times. They witnessed history firsthand and took part in a revolution that changed rural America forever. We went to Commerce once a week. In Commerce, all cities had electricity back when, all my lifetime, but none of the country had it. I had to study by an old coal oil lamp. It was so dim I could strike a match and it'd be, it would be brighter than and that coal oil lamp. The chores that, that it put on my mom to run a household without electricity was unreal. Oh, honey, wash day was a big thing. It was in the head water in the big pot. Wash day, I'm sorry you mentioned it. My mother, six kids, and we, a lot of times we kept a hard in. Of course, the old farm clothes, they got extra, extra dirty. Don't think they didn't. And we had a rub board in a tub, and we scrubbed it. And that was something else. You know, she'd start early in the morning, and a lot of times it wound up at night. Well, I don't know how that lady did it. I do not know. In the early days, we only had a wood stove. So you brought that wood in and put it all behind the stove. And as you needed it, well, you'd get a stick of wood and put in the wood stove. And you could not get a continual heat. It was either hot or cold. Of course, in the summertime, that wood stove was terrible. The heat it put out and, and being closed up in the kitchen. She had those old smoothing irons she had to heat on that stove. And time she tried to iron a, one of our dresses, she'd have to go change it two or three times because it'd get cold. Yeah, we had an out building. You go out and you put your clothes off and it's freezing cold out there, what are you gonna feel like? We used a seasonal book catalog for toilet paper and we'd get one or two a year. Oh, that's not very funny. <laughs> We had running water as soon as we ran to get it. In the summertime, we had put a number three wash tub out in the backyard. In the afternoon, if we had filled that with water, it would be pretty warm by the time Paul came in from the fields so he could have a hot bath. <laughs> Otherwise, we had to heat it in the tea kettle. Kind of hard to fill that thing with warm water. It'd get cold as soon as you <laughs> poured it in there. <laughs> well, we had a wooden ice box, and the ice man came if we hung a towel out. He'd stop. Well, that was every day that he would come. We had that towel out. We had an ice man that delivered ice all over Rockwall. I rode the back of his uh, little delivery place to throw my papers from. So we had an ice card that you could turn, put the card in your door and turn it up to the amount of pounds you wanted and that's what he'd leave. That's the only time we had iced tea was in the summer months because the ice man quit running when it started getting cold. We had a kerosene cook stove and a kerosene refrigerator. And the refrigerator would, ever so often it would just flames would just blow out from the bottom of it and it was kind of scary but you had to run turn it off then. <laughs> when my family would come to visit I would notice the first thing they did when they stepped inside the door was rub their noses because they could smell the kerosene. <laughs> it was apparent that change was needed. On April the 8th 1935 President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 7037, creating the Rural Electrification Administration, or REA. This set in motion a chain of events that led to electric cooperatives springing up all across the country. 
On September the 11th, 1937, local citizens joined together and chartered Farmers Electric Cooperative. By 1940, there were 600 cooperatives in 45 states. After chartering the cooperative, the hard work began. The co-op pioneers traveled throughout the area, trying to convince their neighbors to sign up. It took a public spirited and cooperatively disposed group of people to get this job done. The cost of membership was $5, which was a lot of money during that time. People were cautious, and they wondered if they could really depend on their co-op. People were, didn't just rush in to, to sign up because they didn't think it was going to work and whether it would really be possible to break even, you know. We was working in the field, and uh, this finely dressed man drove to the end of the field and got out of a nice car. And he walked through the field and, and where we was, was working. He said, I represent uh, the REA. And my daddy's words was, what in the devil is the REA? And he told him it was uh, an electrical situation that was started to bring electricity to, to the farmers. At Gilly's General Store at Miller Grove, the people that sat out on the front was called the Spittin' and Whittlers. But they always talk about how far did they get on that line by your house today. <laughs> and when the REA started out there and putting up the electric light poles, it was in the summertime, and we'd get out and watch them dig holes and put those poles in, and we'd say, Daddy, how much longer will it take? And he'd say, well, it'll take time, and they'll get it to the house, and we'll have electricity. As soon as Paul saw them laying the light poles, he bought an electric cook stove and refrigerator. But they sat in the middle of the floor until the electricity came. <laughs> and our house was small. We had to go around those for nearly a year. <laughs> well, Mr. King, this is the day. He said, I'm going to quote a scripture from the Bible. The Lord said, let there be light and there will be light today. When I was 12 years old, REA came through Hopkins County. Then December the 7th, 1941, World War II broke out. Then they froze everything, see, they wouldn't, they stopped everything. Even making new cars and everything, you couldn't even buy new tires hardly. Anyway, when the war was over in 45, they had never started in electricity out in the country, south of Commerce, just four miles south of Commerce. And it was 1946 before we got electricity out there south of the Commerce. On September 14, 1938, the first 50 miles of Farmers Electric Cooperative lines were energized. On that day, 101 members' lives were changed forever. Through hard work and determination, the cooperative continued to grow. One house at a time, rural folks entered the modern world. For many, it was a day they never forgot. Having the power was a dream come true. Perhaps a Tennessee farmer said it best, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this, the greatest thing on the earth is to have the love of God in your heart, and the next greatest thing is to have electricity in your house. It sure was different when we got electricity. When RA come out in the country, that was the most wonderful thing that ever happened to us. My daddy said, it's almost like heaven. When we first got the electric lights on, us kids, we shut our eyes, and Daddy turned the light switch on, and we opened our eyes. Daddy, it's wonderful. We can see. That's, that's kids for you. Of course, we didn't have light fixtures. We just had a long cord with a bulb, but it was so nice. The first thing after the electricity was actually in that my husband got was a few tools for the shop, and he bought two 100 foot extension cards so he could run it to the barn right quick. Because <laughs> we didn't have the barn wired the same time we did the house. <laughs> and the first thing my mother bought was a refrigerator. We got electricity at the house, and we never had had that a year round icebox. And that made us where we could drink iced tea year round if we wanted to. And I still drink iced tea year round. We did get a radio, and my father listened to all of the baseball games. My mother and them would listen to all of the soap poplars. 
And that was a ritual for them. Now they'd get through in the kitchen and get right up there by that radio and there was a lot of things that they loved to listen to on the radio. Oh yes. The next morning my mom and dad went to Sulphur Springs and bought an electric iron. Of course I had two sisters older than my twin sister and I. And they were the ones that really and truly did the ironing. How can I forget the washing machine? Yeah, and it had a roller on it. You uh, washed in the washing machine, and then you would run them through the roller. That was the biggest thing that I can remember was the washing machine. And you read your own meter. They issued some little card, little penny postcards, they called them. And once a month, you'd go out and look at the meter, and you'd put it on this card, and you'd send it in. You read your own meter. Electricity was still new to us, and we didn't have a television. And the children all had the bumps. And they had been begging their daddy for a television. But he came home with a television that, that day when they were all swelled out to air with the mumps. And I still have that television. It still works. Oh, it changed life altogether, really and truly. Because there's so many things that we could have then that we had never had before. It was just made so many things so much handier than doing the old hard way. It's something that I thank God for, that we had Farmers Electric to come in my lifetime that I knew what it would be like, what it was without it, and then to get it to see what a difference it would make in my life. When they electrified the countryside, it made a different world for us here. I still remember those days and remember how grateful people were to be able to have a refrigerator instead of an icebox, to have an electric stove. It was just a, a new world for us. Happy birthday, Farmers Electric Cooperative. Happy birthday to you and many more. Farmers Electric Cooperative has always been focused on our members' needs. In the beginning, it was simply getting electricity to the farm. Today, we are a modern, technologically advanced organization that remains attentive to our members. We offer members several ways to pay their electric bill, from the traditional monthly payment to the innovative Power Up prepay program, which allows members to pay for electricity before they use it, much like buying gas for their car. We also now offer the new Smart Hub app that allows members to pay their electric bill and monitor their account using their smartphones or tablets. We are always looking for ways to improve service to our members. One example of this is our Automated Metering Infrastructure, or AMI, which allows us to communicate directly with each meter. Another example is our Dispatch Center, which is manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to help ensure our members have electricity all the time. Providing electricity will always be our number one priority. However, we also offer programs to make life a little easier, such as our Co-op Connections Card program, which provides savings on many goods and services. Since we launched the program at our 2010 annual meeting, our members have saved over $180,000 on prescription drugs alone. Now the program has expanded to include savings on dental, lab, chiropractic, and vision care. At Farmers Electric Cooperative, we are proud of our history of bringing electricity to rural Texas, but we will never rest on our laurels. Today, Farmers Electric Cooperative serves over 49,000 members and has more than 4,500 miles of line. Yes, we have come a long way from those first 50 miles of line. But we have never forgotten that solemn trust the people of this area put in Farmers Electric Cooperative and the government program called the REA. Our pledge to you is that we will continue to provide you safe, reliable, affordable electricity in the future. 75 years from now, we trust people will look back and say that we kept our promise. Happy birthday, Farmers Electric Cooperative!